Hi Aries, this is your January 3rd through January 9th weekly tarot reading. I do five separate spreads in my weekly readings. We'll have a spread on new love, a separate spread on love in an existing relationship or marriage. I'll do an X spread. We'll talk about your work, your business, and your finances, and we'll see what you're not expecting to happen this week. Please like, share, and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is a new love this week. We have the Eight of Cups, clarified by the Ace of Pentacles. We have the Sun. We have the King of Pentacles, clarified by the Knight of Cups. In the potential outcome, we have the Queen of Wands with uh, the Empress and the Four of Wands. And we also have the Ace of Cups on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or a Water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. I like it. I like it a lot, um, Aries. We've got two Aces on the table. We've got a couple. You, the Queen of Wands, and uh, the King of Pentacles. And uh, we do have an amazing potential. Um, yeah, so the first connect mode is the Eight of Cups and it's classified by the Ace of Pentacles. For some of you, this is somebody you already know, but perhaps this person uh, left for school or they had to leave abroad or perhaps they had to leave to work someplace else and now this person is back in town, right? So this is somebody you already know, you haven't seen them in a while and uh, here they are and they see you and they're gonna fall in love with you Aries plain and simple got two aces on the table and other cards here but uh, for if this is a brand new person not someone you know this person when they see you they'll believe their search for the love of their life is over right the eight of cups is not only somebody who is leaving but it's uh, also a card of somebody who leaves a place in search of something right in some tarot decks one of the cups in the eight of cups is actually up in the sky so this person is walking towards something they're looking for they're searching for and uh, with the eight of cups I think this person will think that their search for true love is over when they see you right so the eight of cups is classified by the ace of pentacles and we also have the ace of cups on the bottom of the deck two aces the ace of pentacles always comes from somebody who is ready to settle down, somebody who is ready to start a family, right? The Ace of Pentacles is a golden opportunity. Every once in a while, the Ace of Pentacles comes through as a proposal card. And the Ace of Cups on the bottom of the deck, it's all about love for this person. Lots and lots of love for you, Aries. The Ace of Cups is always about genuine, authentic love. Right, so uh, the next card after the Eight of Cups that came out is the Sun. The Sun is the happiest card in the deck. So this person will be jumping up for joy because they have found you or because they're back in town and uh, perhaps you were younger <laughs> at the time and now you've blossomed into this beautiful, amazing human being. So you're going to make them really, really happy with the Sun card, right? No matter what the situation is. Then we got the King of Pentacles. That's the person who is coming towards you. The King of Pentacles uh, could be an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. If it's not an Earth sign, this is somebody who is very grounded, somebody who doesn't make sudden moves, somebody who works for a financial institution, right? The King of Pentacles is qualified by the Knight of Cups. So if it's not an Earth sign, uh, they could be a Water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, right? Um, with the Knight of Cups. They could have both earth and water in their chart, but the Knight of Cups is very similar energy as the Ace of Cups on the bottom of the deck. The Knight of Cups is the Knight on the Shining Armor. It's always also, just like the Ace of Cups, about genuine, authentic love. So, like I said, this person will see and they will fall in love with you immediately. <laughs> And uh, in the potential outcome, we have the Queen of Wands with the Empress and the Four of Wands. The Queen of Wands, that's you, right? Male or female, absolutely doesn't matter. And the Empress right next to the Queen of Wands, I believe that is also you. Since this is the potential outcome, you know, if you uh, decide to go forward with this person, and I think you will, uh, the Empress is like an upgrade for you. I'm not saying you're not the Empress right now, but the Empress is like a status change, right? From a single person or somebody who is dating, uh, and one person to somebody who is married or somebody who is in a commitment. The Empress often comes through as the future wife or the future significant other figure. Um, and uh, this is the way they're going to be treating you. They're going to be putting you up on a pedestal. They're going to be, um, you know, behaving towards you accordingly, just like the Empress deserves. <laughs> Besides that, the Empress is actually one of the most positive cards in the deck. The Empress is... Um, 
abundance in its purest form and in my spreads the Empress usually shows up as a sign from above or a stamp of approval for a connection to move forward. And uh, the last card I came out is the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is one of the commitment to marriage cards. Some people call it the 1111 card. To me personally the Four of Wands always reminds me of an actual wedding but uh, ultimately it is a commitment to marriage card. So yeah, the potential is amazing with the, that Empress right there in the middle. It's a major arcana card. right? Like I said, we got two aces. We've got the sound card. We've got the person, the king of pentacles. And uh, they are they will have lots and lots of love for you. right? I always like when uh, we get a king and a queen in the same spread. Granted, this person is most likely a different zodiac sign than you, but whenever a king and a queen comes out, that means the two of you are mature, the two of you can compromise if you have to, and you vibe on similar level in terms of your development, in terms of you being ready for a commitment, right? So, yeah. A king and a queen make a great couple. Always. <laughs> All right, Aries, really happy for you. Congratulations. Aries, if you are already married or if you're in a relationship, this spread is for you. We have the sun, we have the lovers, uh, we have the will of fortune, and we have the emperor on the bottom of the deck. Uh, you could be dealing with another Aries or a Gemini. I don't know, I gotta be honest with you, I don't know what you guys are doing, but this is like all kinds of good, all kinds of happy happening here. <laughs> <laughs> right, every single card on the table is a major arcana card. One of them is your personal card. The Emperor on the bottom of the deck, that is you, Aries, unless you're dealing with another Aries, right? The first card I came out is the Sun. The Sun is the happiest card in the deck. Then we've got the Lovers. The Lovers is the personal Gemini card. Um, so if your significant other is a Gemini, it makes total sense. If they're not, it's still... It still makes total sense. And the Lovers is a card of um, soulmate connection. It's a card of a twin flame connection if you believe in twin flames. And the Lovers could simply be what the uh, name of the card is, right? The two of you are in love with each other, right? It's actually one of the best cards when it comes to love. Partnerships, uh, marriages, you know. And the Wheel of Fortune right next to the deck. It could be a card of travel, so perhaps you guys are going on vacation or you guys are going on uh, just a weekend getaway and that's why you're so happy and you're gonna be the lovers <laughs> during the weekend <laughs> away from kids away from everybody away from civilization just the two of you you could be traveling with your kids as well you know um, so but the will of fortune is also a start a start of a new cycle a very fortunate new cycle you could be starting something together like I said I'm not exactly sure what's happening here but it's all kinds of happy it's all kinds of happy <laughs> all right enjoy your time let's see if anybody comes back from the past for you Aries this uh, week keep in mind it could be somebody from a couple of months ago a year ago or a couple of years ago so it doesn't have to be the most recent ex also keep in mind we are in uh, Venus retrograde until January 29th this means more than one ex could potentially resurface <laughs> right so I got the Queen of Cups clarified by the Ace of Cups, uh, we have the Empress, we have the King of Swords clarified by Judgment, and we also have the Six of Wands on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a Water Sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. You could also be dealing with an Air Sign, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. So we have a couple here, right? The Queen of Cups and the King of Swords. Uh, you assign the roses you wish. <laughs> you could be the Queen of Cups or the King of Swords, you know, however it is applicable in your situation. So the Queen of Cups could be a water sign, uh, the King of Swords could be an air sign. If the Queen of Cups is not a water sign, then this is somebody who is, you know, kind of emotional, very loving, often wears their heart in their sleeve. And uh, if the King of Swords is not an air sign, this is somebody who is very determined, very serious, somebody who doesn't, you know, have, make empty promises, right? They always keep their word, but they could be harsh at times. So. We do have a couple here, and I do see it as a reconciliation. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, the Queen of Cups is classified by the Ace of Cups, right? So the Ace of Cups is all about love, and it's kind of symbolic that, um, you know, you see how the Queen of Cups is holding out a cup, and that's exactly the cup we see in the Ace of Cups right there. The, uh, the Queen of Cups is ready to share her love. And uh, the King of Swords is clarified by uh, Judgment. Judgment is a card of somebody coming back from the past. And uh, the Six of Wands on the bottom of the deck. This is a card of victory. It's a card of success. And uh, it's a card of feeling great, feeling determined, feeling successful. And uh, it's also a card of... Um, a proposal. Back in the day, the Six of Wands used to be called the Proposal card. The Empress in the middle, 
Um, I don't know if you watched the uh, the first spread, the new love spread. I already uh, we had the Empress in that spread as well. Um, the Empress is abundance in its purest form, and in my spreads, uh, the Empress usually shows up as a sign from above or a stamp of approval for a connection to move forward. And it's kind of symbolic that the cards came out the way they did, right? With the Queen of Cups on the left, the King of Swords on the right, and uh, the Empress is right there in the middle. So you do have uh, an approval <laughs> from the universe. The universe is definitely on your side, both of your side, right? To uh, get back together and make it work. All right, cool. Let's talk about your work, your business, and your finances areas this week. We have the Nine of Pentacles, uh, we have uh, the Seven of Cups, we have the Five of Swords, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune, and we also have the Magician on the bottom of the deck. It's an interesting spread, I gotta be honest with you, that Five of Swords right next to the deck was the last card I came out as I was just originally laying down those cards. And, but it's clarified by the Wheel of Fortune, right? Um, Perhaps you just recently got a new job offer, or you will be getting a new job offer and you'll be thinking about it really hard. And uh, you know that if you were to accept it, then uh, your existing employer is not going to be happy. It's going to be an ugly goodbye with that Five of Swords. Because the Five of Swords is a card of a fight, it's a card of a separation, but it's the type of separation when people slam doors into each other's faces or on the way out. Right? So perhaps. Uh, at this point, you're thinking about it with the uh, Seven of Cups, the second card from the left. You're thinking about it, um, you know, should you take it, should you not take it, is it going to be worth it in the long run, right? But I think you're going to go for it, because the Wheel of Fortune is the start of a new cycle. The Magician, in this case, is uh, you. You know that you can make anything happen, perhaps... Uh, you've reached the end of your potential at this existing job and the new job is going to be like an upgrade, a promotion for you because they really want you because you, you possess this special uh, skill set with the magician you can make anything happen and that's why they want you and the nine of pentacles, the first card I came out, that's you that is definitely you this is actually one of the best cards when it comes to work, business and finances that means you are already doing great and perhaps that's why this new company wants you so bad, right? Uh, you're just standing there and uh, you're enjoying this recognition <laughs> right now. Um, for some of you, you don't even have to get a new job offer. Perhaps you're thinking yourself, what's next for you, right? So the Seven of Cups, it could be you looking at options, it could be you thinking about what's next for you or what you can do to improve your skill set, um, you know, some of you could be thinking about uh, changing your areas of expertise and uh, you can make it happen with the Magician card, right? You know uh, you can accomplish anything with the Magician. But the thing about the Five of Swords, it would probably still require for you to sever ties with your existing employer and, and uh, they're not going to like it. But I think you're still going to do it because uh, the Wheel of Fortune is all about moving forward. It's the start of a new cycle. All right? Cool. Let's see what you're not expecting to happen, Aries, this uh, week. We have the Wheel of Fortune, we have the King of Swords, we have uh, the Ten of Pentacles, and we have the Queen of Wands on the bottom of the deck. This really reminds me of the X spread I did for you a few minutes ago. It's pretty much the same thing here, right? So we've got the King of Swords and we've got the Queen of Wands. And uh, what you're not expecting, I guess, is them come back from the past and uh, the two of you to... Uh, get back together. <laughs> Plain and simple, I didn't even have to clarify anything. The Wheel of Fortune is a new cycle starting between the two of you, right? And uh, the uh, Ten of Pentacles right next to the deck is a kind of a commitment or marriage. So yeah, I think I called it correctly when I said it is a reconciliation in the expert because yes, with the Ten of Pentacles this is definitely a commitment or even marriage. The Ten of Pentacles is um, all about long term, right? It's a card of a commitment or marriage. It's a very solid type of deal. This is uh, when people buy real estate together, they grow old together, have children together, and that is still an option for them. So yeah, it is a reconciliation and perhaps you never thought you'll ever see this person again. But here they are and uh, the two of you are back together. Alright, so that's what I got for you Aries for uh, this week. If this video resonates with you, please like it. Please also share and subscribe. And uh, other than that, Aries, have an amazing week. And there you have it. This was your tarot reading for this time period. I hope it resonated with you. 
and helps you live a better life one way or the other. Thank you for watching, sharing and subscribing.